Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and I would like to show you a special project today which is creating a shampoo tube. Um, I came to that idea because around about half a year ago or so I um, had to create this shot of, um, of shampoos and the idea behind it was to replace photographs so in future you wouldn't have to take pictures of that product again once you change the label everything would be fine um, I originally did this project in Cinema 4D but I thought it would be funny to recreate it in Houdini so there will be some differences but all in all, I was uh, kind of surprised how good it works in a procedural manner as well. So, good fun! Let's start with a geo node. Call it tube. Dive in, pressing I and delete the file node. Use a tube instead. Set it to polygon and give it 16 columns rather 32 columns and 16 rows just to get started. Also I set the radii to 0.5 so that way the diameter of my tube is one unit. Next I want to shape and position my, um, my cylinder. So for that I put it to 0.06 copy this parameter and paste it as relative reference in the Z dimension as well. Now for the height it should be 16 units and now I can copy and paste it to the translate channel. That way I can move the tube up and if I divide it by 2 I can make sure the tube hits the floor right perfectly. Next I use a point node to flatten the cylinder on the top side so it kind of gets squeezed together. And This works by multiplying the Tx value so I keep the Ty the way it is because that's the height and I multiply the Tx value in the X channel by dollar ty which is the height divided by the maximum height which is dollar y max let's press enter and you see i squeezed it but in this case i squeezed the bottom so what i do next is to just add one to it So that way it gets wider on top and stays the way it was on the bottom. Now I would like to have some more influence on the way it is squeezed so I multiply the first bracket ti divided by y max and multiply it by 0.045 press enter so the effect is not quite that strong. Next I want um, to squeeze it even more in the tz direction. So this time I multiply it by $ty divided by $y max. Now the bottom gets squeeze together again but this time I am using a 1 before that so I inverted the effect so now the top is squeezed together but because I don't want to squeeze it together all the way I want to have some tiny gap up there I set it to 1.02 that way you can see a little, little gap which looks a bit more believable. You can call this squeeze if you like. 
additionally and this is shape and a bit of pause for positioning. Um, the next squeezing takes place on the bottom ring here uh, because I want to uh, push it inside the cap that is about to get created. So how can I get the, um, the opening down there? I create a group node and um, call it, I don't know, edges, set it to points and of course there is this nice edge option which says unshared edges but this selects the top as well. So what I can do is um, just deactivate the edge function and go back to numbers and use an expression. With expressions I can access the points for example by height which is $ty and say it should equal $yMin. Now only the bottom points get selected without any tolerance but it seems to work. And now let's squeeze those guys in using a transform node and uh, well, what we've chosen here was edges, so I say shape edges or edge, shape the edge, and in the transform I just scale it in, but I use the group I've just created, namely edge, so this makes it fit in, maybe like so. We will move the tube up later, so for the time being we can just create a null and call it body. The next item we're going to create is the fold on top, which kind of holds the tube together. So we create the fold out of the grid. And the grid should stand up, so it's oriented that way. And the height should be rather minimal. We can still change that later, but I choose 008 for a start. And the width should fit to this shape up here. So there's a function called bbox, which is asking for a channel to refer to or a rather a node so I just type in point squeeze and I would like to have um, the dimension of size X so now let's have a look this should if it doesn't work let's use the help Card, so I can just type in the box, use, look at the expression function, and here I see it's the x size. So the x size, and now this shape is exactly as wide as um, the maximum width of the tube. Next, I want to have some subdivisions. So I use four rows and maybe 50 divisions to, to apply a structure later on. Let's leave that ghost thing. And now I would like to um, do some scaling on, on some primitives. So at first I would like to select the middle row here which is sticking right in the floor so with a group node I can select the center all and for example use a bounding box which is extremely narrow, uh, extremely shallow Let's 
kind of approximate this. And well, it doesn't really work with entities contained. And we can um, define those uh, values better anyway. So let's just choose um, based on some shapes we had here, uh, the width. So as before, we, we had the X size which we can use here, so let's paste the expressions so that way we should have the exact width. The depth is not really important. Point um, or one would do. And um, next we should have a selection which well, we could fine-tune this guy um, because actually we need the the height of this. Let's copy the parameter and paste it here and make it um, divided by 2. So if we have three um, kind of rows, then the middle one will be always um, contained by half the size. This works nicely. So I call this group uh, node center all and the group name fits to that. So next we can just copy paste this node and now I want a center inner which is called center inner and this should be um, smaller. So um, by a tiny bit, so let's press 0.1, which is way too much. We're here in the millimeter range and make the first value minus 0.1 or so. And so this makes sure the group selection is a bit smaller and as we didn't activate um, include entities not wholly contained, this leaves out the right and the left polygon. So um, what we're going to do with it um, is uh, we're going to use both groups now for deformations. This is a good advice in general. You would first um, put all the groups in because with an unchanged geometry you can do all the selections easily and then you start manipulating stuff. So now let's just Transform the middle row a bit, choose center all, and scale the middle part up to, let's say, 255, which is um, bringing it really, really close to the edge. Um, next, I want to go back to um, where everything was still easy and select the top corner points and um, there are several ways to do this. We could use um, a, another group node and um, just use bounding spheres and kind of adjust the size of this guy and set it to points and then it would go more and more complex. but Maybe an interesting way of selecting that point and the other point in the corner is just by letting a WOPSOP count um, to how many points each point is connected because the corners are only directly connected to two points whereas all the other points such as this guy is connected to three points and this point is connected to four points. So it's a unique thing to the um, corner points that they are just connected to two other points. Um, for searching the corners, let's use a WOPSOP, we call it corners, and dive inside. 
So now let's type neighbor count for the current point number, of course, and compare the counted neighbors with uh, being less than three, which is two and not three, four, and so on. Then type then because if this condition is met, if the point is connected to less than three other points, then you can put it inside a group. Add point to group, call it the group corner. And now um, we need to put the right point numbers in here, so choose point number into next of if node and connect the point number with the point number in add group. Let's go out and middle click and hold down middle mouse button on this Vopsop and you see four points in corner which is this point, this point, this point and this point. Um, now let's how to get rid of the bottom points. Um, let's just um, choose another condition. Uh, which is the points have to be above zero in height. So let's extract a vector component, get vector component. We use the second component, which is the y value, basically the height. And we again, this is pretty much the same, compare it. This time we compare the height if it is greater than zero. If so, then if the condition is met, then we, we could put it to the group here. So now I don't want to create a, another if and put it into a group, but I would like to just um, let the Vopsop check whether both conditions are met. And for that we can use an AND because it says if this and this is true then the condition is met. So you can delete the output node and let's just go up and check this and it says two points in corner and I have the strong feeling that it's those guys up there. So let's test this by using a soft transform and the soft transform is waiting for the corner points and um, we can now just um, play around with some values so basically I want to move stuff downwards very slightly but not all the points but just See that effect? Just the corners. Like so. Um, there's different kinds of um, attenuations if you like. Cubic looks really good right away. Or we could use Meta Ball, which gives us uh, some more options. When I was on Cubic, it was just um, basically the radius I can choose. I don't know about angles. But when I go to Metaball, I can choose different kind of models and the Blin one had a nice shape. Okay, now we prepared a good topology with no overlaps um, for extruding stuff. So first of all, we're going to use the poly extrude to extrude inwards the group inner. Center inner is for doing stuff like this. Of course, we have to use minimal values here. So we have a slight extrusion inwards. In this state, let's create a group for the front. So I can delete the others, but I want to keep track of those newly created inside polygons. Next, let's, let's extrude the whole thing 
well, we can turn around, no problem, and make this very little as well. Even over one. And next, I'm going to extrude the little guys here inwards again. So I have to grab the extrude front group and make this minus 01. So it's very, very little. This is what it looks like from the back. So it's not extruded so deep that it kind of gives problem in the next step which is um, let's use three o's and a two which is mirroring so i can just mirror the whole structure to the other side using not this but the z and it's consolidating aka fusing the points keeping the original otherwise my front would be missing okay next um, next let's um, just use a knife to cut through the whole structure i want to go a bit higher so maybe this is okay and um, if you ask yourself why didn't we do the cut earlier um, like for example before the soft transformation then the answer is because then our inwards extrusion would have gone wrong so the order of execution is crucial let's experiment with doing it a little earlier like here but then it doesn't really make sense anymore um, yeah, it would still work, but wouldn't make a difference. So you can choose when to use the knife tool. After the first extrusion, it's okay. So let's copy paste the knife and um, copy from the first knife the value, paste it in there, set it minus. So that way, if I move this slightly up, the other guy follows in the other direction. Make sure there's no overlapping going on. So, like this is okay, but if you go like this over cross, then your geometry will fail. So, respect that border. Next we can, after mirroring, subdivide the whole thing because what we essentially did was preparing a geometry which is looking good when subdivided. So later on we might use two subdivisions or um, maybe just one. Now let's play around with it, maybe the extrusion can be a little deeper. Well, not this one, but the ones regarding the front pieces. So it looks a bit better later on. Extrude inwards, thicken, and lacking other words, I call this dense or yeah, mirror it and subdivide it like so. I leave it as uh, with one subdivision because from far away it will look okay that way. As before, um, we're gonna position that model or piece of model later, but so far I would just call it 
um, fold in a null object. So now you can see the two change, um, chains of commands for both objects. Uh, the last item we need is the cap and the tap, uh, cap is being created out of a tube as well and the height of the tube will move all the other objects upwards. So now let's just start with a tube that has um, well a certain amount of uh, divisions. For now I don't really care. I can just say you're a polygon. And you get some even amount of subdivisions, maybe 8 rows and 32 columns, but we will see later. And um, again, I set the tube to 0.5 radii, and I will transform the shape um, this time uniformly um, in X. We will um, just take over um, the shape, not this one, but this shape. So let's copy this parameter and paste it in there. Copy this guy and paste it there. So now the height can be set manually. I'd say 4 centimeters is more than enough. We can also go to 3.6 centimeters, so it's rather flat. Um, let's compare it with the body. So this is kind of how they um, get stuck together. Next, I would like to create a group for um, the kind of piece where I can put in my finger to open the cap. So for this I create a group. I can call this finger. The group is called finger and I again work with bounding box which is uh, maybe 3 centimeters roundabout and 2 centimeters and um, the depth can be rather shallow 0.04 so it sits within and now we move it with Z to one direction and um, we can make this more procedural by taking over um, the radius. The radius comes from this scale value again and you put it in there and I think you only need half of it so it sits on there perfectly. Um, now we can reduce this guy to point one five or so or 0.2 just to make sure it um, doesn't touch the other side once you change the radius. And this will be the piece that gets um, kind of extruded inwards later on in a special way. So um, we can now fluently choose more detail and it would still make a good selection. Now let's see, we can use the finger group and poly extrude it inwards using the inside with a little value and choose average, sorry about that, um, average positions only on the finger group of course. So maybe average positions yeah, leads to a way cleaner result than using normals, which is kind of shifted. And this value is subject to change. And of course we want to um, push uh, those new polygons inside, but 
we don't want to push them all the same we want to have them uh, like a sphere shape so you can actually place your fingertip in there smoothly so what we need is an output group with a front next let's uh, think about how we can kind of verify the new polygons now before we use the Vopsop for some magic let's use another group node to convert the um, extrude front group from our poly extrude node so we can disable the creation and go to edit convert primitives to points and now it's offering the extrude front now this is my point group it's using the same name if I don't want this I click on preserve original now use a Vopsop only on the extrude front group dive inside and the trick to spherify um, the selection is quite simple actually. You would just normalize the position of the existing points. And um, well, if you do so, they will be put into a sphere shape but far away from our cap because this is the radius of one out there so what we have to do to reduce this effect is multiply this with the radius again and we get the radius in using a parameter so we can chill, still change it and this parameter is um, called um, multiply cap I can um, call this um, cap size or um, yeah let's, let's leave it like that and um, also um, I, I would just use this node to set parameter attributes and go outside now this guy kind of guy is waiting for uh, some parameter because then it's multiplying all these values. Let's see whether it works or not. Now it's sitting all on the null. It is a... Let's disable use this node and go outside. And now we have a control over moving this inwards and outwards. So this is not an um, extrusion yet, uh, although it appears similar. It's just a movement from here to there. Um, we can also do this procedurally. So let's use um, the cap, uh, the radius again. Put it inside this guy and divide it by two. So whenever you may change the radius of the cap, this will always fit in here. The next step we can do is um, inverting the um, this kind of uh, shape. So now the finger piece is. Um, bulging outside so we can use a transform on the very same group extrude front and um, of course just setting the scale Z that's the direction to minus one uh, won't do the job because it's using the 0, 0, 0 pivot as the kind of um, axis to scale around. But if you go $GC, 
x dollar gcy and dollar gcz then it's using the centroid of the group selection to scale around so now the only thing you need to do is moving it in the negative z direction and yeah this shouldn't be or doesn't need to be too close so 0.003 seems like a good value all right next i want to split the cap up so i um, use a delete node on the primitives um, and choose an expression which again cares about um, or asks about the height of the primitives and that way I can say if you are smaller than minus 005 then you get deleted all the prints get deleted and copy pasting the delete node and deleting the non-selected ones leaves me with the bottom pieces and well that's kind of the um, the reason I'm using a delete instead of a clip sop because with a clip I can do that just for demonstration purposes um, the clip would do the same job but I couldn't be that sure like how close um, the new edges are together and later on if I subdivide stuff it may be that with the top cap for example I have a very 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 um, let's say close um, gap and if I choose the, the bottom I have a very wide kind of um, pieces uh, polygons so that way it, it's much nicer to just um, delete the existing polygons right away that way all my distances are equal next I want to identify the um, open um, edges so this time I'm using a group node um, with um, edges activated and choose unshared edges the same can be done for the other part of the cap and now I use polycap polycap is asking for um, a group so I call my group open the other guy open as well and here I put in open for closing unfortunately the polycap doesn't um, write out any groups so we have to use a trick to identify the newly created polygons and this works by um, well first of all fusing old and new together so looks like this and um, the bottom part can be scaled in a bit um, because I want to have a gap in future so let's just use 0.99 and use dollar y min so it sticks to the floor and now if you see those guys in combination you see there is a slight gap which looks wonderful in the end okay um, I don't really see that we need the fuse it looks the same but that's something we should keep in mind I just delete it for the time being and merge the two pieces together mm, now let's identify the big parts and there's a nice expression for that um, the trick is if you uh, want to get the caps you use an expression and you ask for the number of vertices each polygon has 
because all my other polygons have four vertices in each corner is one so I can now say n vtx bigger than four which is just the big new polygons that have ever so many vertices and this group called caps now gets poly extruded inwards so that way um, a nice subdivision can go around the corner let me demonstrate you this I think I didn't uh, forget much so let's just use a subdivide just for testing and of course we get we run into problems here on top but all the corner parts look excellent let's um, kind of get rid of that step and the thing we should do well we maybe don't need to extrude it that much inside because I want to have crisp corners and um, probably some more um, subdivisions or divisions um, to have a rather crisp corner like so this behaves differently than in the uh, subdivisions especially if you look at the gap you want this to be rather sudden yep with um, less subdivisions it appears a bit like a toy so no need for subdividing it now um, and now we should use a transform node to position the whole thing namely I want dollar size y divided by 2 so that way my model sits right on the floor and um, in the same manner I just use a null object to call the cap a cap. Now we have cap, fold and the body created. Use a merge node to bring all the parts together and that should be the time to save stuff as well and next we should um, move the body upwards so now let's just transform it right above so I'll always try to keep um, nodes on the same height if they have the same or similar function. In this case I need the size of the cap to move my tube upwards. So let's just say I have a B-box of the cap and I say the Y size close it down and now it was has been moved upwards by the way if you think that this kind of bulging in is not very believable let's look at the wire mode and you see I just have not enough subdivisions here I think and uh, we could well use more going to the detail of the, in the very beginning and now this is about to get better especially if we subdivide it later we could also use a uh, soft transform instead which is more definable use edge again scale it in the, the scale can be done here if you just press middle mouse button and put your mouse to the left 
then we can use this instead. Let's just do this. Yeah, it's at least a bit more fluid and gives more room to play. Quadratic, meta ball, and maybe the blind model has the most natural shape here. Great. Now let's put the fold up. up. So the fold must be like um, must take into account two sizes, namely the cap and also the body. And because I don't want it to stick uh, right in the the tube, I take the own height into account as well, which is um, probably, let's see where I can take it right from the start. There is the size y and I would like um, it to appear here so let's not copy paste it let's just type channel dot dot slash and take the grid one and take the channel size y and close it now of course the size Y is the full size, so let us just hit Alt E to open up that expression editor and put the last um, thing in brackets and divide it by two, so it's half the height, which makes it sit right on top. In reality, this might be um, a bit lower, so you could also um, do it times 0.4 so it's a bit inside which, which gives us which gives us some room to kind of squeeze um, the top thing in again now in the end we can subdivide the whole thing just make sure there's no subdivision going on in those um, kind of chain of commands but do it in the end it is a one-time subdivision and that's our procedural model so far. Now, well, we can still fine-tune stuff. But I think it's an okay start. You can play around with all kinds of stuff and because we don't have created that many nodes I think it should still be possible to, to find where to if, if you change for example um, measurements rather drastically and if stuff breaks then you can easily find out how to fight that if you just go through um, each step and then you will see that okay maybe if I did such a wide um, uh, selection, group selection, I need to just put in the stuff deeper as well to keep my um, my kind of topology alive. So if nothing is overlapping badly, then I can just follow all the way through and see now, despite the fact it looks extreme, it's still working. So let's just go a few steps back because I like my measurements I had before. And um, let's take a close look at the kind of uh, finger piece here because um, I better like it with some more subdivisions. So let's go to this step and use maybe four divisions, which has the effect that it looks much nicer once it's subdivided because I have st 
stronger edges. Let's use two subdivisions just for testing. And if you think this is too strong, then you could still manipulate either the inset or reduce the divisions by maybe um, three. All right. Now let's um, improve the shape of our tube even further because um, usually you would have some kind of um, dent across the surface. It's, it's never that regular. So in order to just push it inwards slightly on each side, we should now go to the tube once more and just see whether we can kind of um, put some gradient colors across right after we uh, made the tube a little smaller. And there's plenty of room to move down the other nodes. And now we should just use a Vopsop to create gradients. A Vopsop is a method um, um, to manipulate all the points at once using the same rules. So we could, for example, say that we want to know uh, from the inputs. These are the inputs. If you hover over with your mouse and wait a little, then you get a length, longer ex, um, explanation like the point position or the point normals are here. So basically that's all the characteristics um, of our points. And this is the output side with point position again and the point color attribute which is useful for debugging or better to just see what we're doing. So for example, I could connect the position directly to the diffuse color and that way I have some kind of colorful gradient. Um, let me just show you before um, reshaping. So in, in that kind of manner, um, it is possible to see the dimensions of your tube in color. But as you can see by scaling, they are changing um, because that were absolute position values and we want um, relative positions, so we can just um, choose a relative box. I just type, if you type bounding box, by the way, you get two options. Let's choose bounding, and the one bounding box is um, working on, on a larger scale. I want um, the relative bounding box, which is really sticking to my geometry. And it's using the right click and when you have stuff connected just use a right click and say disconnect and I can use the relative bounding box and it's sucking in the position values right away so I don't need the globals anymore and the relative bounding box is looking much better if you have a look at this and especially if you go to hidden line visible, you have no shading and then you can see um, that my colors, red, green and blue, are running all across the geometry. So they start at zero, you can tell. Um, when, when they have no color, that's the darkest spot and they're running up to bright, which is, the, which is a one. So. Basically, it's running all across in width and height and depth. So that's the next topic. We should isolate that kind of uh, vector components. So let's just type get vector component. And here it's asking me whether it wants the first, like the red, green or blue, or the first or second or third component. I take the first one because um, X is the first axis I want to use and you can see already that the left side is black because this is zero and the right side is white because this is one. Now all I need to do um, to 
play around with um, the distribution of colors or the, the gradient, I use a ramp parameter. This is using my gradient and kind of remapping it, it as soon as I choose spline map and call this value x. I use Catmull ROM for interpolation so I don't have straight connections later on but curves. So let's go up and this is my x ramp and I can now play around with that. This would be full white. I could invert the effect. I could also put a new point in the middle and that way I can really define what's about to be kind of um, influenced by a later effect. So I leave it with that hill. If you need more space, by the way, you can click on the down arrow so that, that you can maximize the ramp. You should always look at the details and then you might find yourself with values that are different than expected, namely minus something. And in order to change that, you can use a fit, -o, fit range right behind the ramp so your um, colors um, won't um, go bigger than 1 or not smaller than 0. You can also color this um, pressing C um, with red because red is the color for direction X. Now let's um, kind of copy paste those guys and turn them green because they are representing the Y direction. I wouldn't choose the first but the second component and another way of writing this is using back to float so that way you have x and y visible right away. Now let's have a look at this. You see a gradient from bottom to top. Let's go up and play with that as well and so that way we could say the area of influence is maybe around here there's some peak then it goes down now i would like to have x and y on top of each other so when i say in x that there is black, y shouldn't override it, but instead we want to multiply those values. That way a zero kills all the color. Let's combine those guys and now you see it's taking effect. I just give this some more room. Okay, I can drop it out totally and then I would have my kind of gradients here. Now, um, I made the experience that um, those curves um, are, despite the fact they look okay, um, they don't give me perfectly smooth results um, on my geometry. So that's why I would uh, smoothen the color values right after this Vopsop. Go to smooth and don't keep it to position, but change it over to color. And now let's smooth this maybe 20 iterations and set the cut off rather low. This uh, kind of um, line is still a bit strong, so we should see what we can do. Maybe using five curves all together so it, it ends up smoothly. Now let's use a uh, kind of another Vopsop to bulge out 
this shape. But first of all, let's take in our point squeeze node. Um, well, I'm not really um, interested in those other guys, they can come later. And now it would be the time to use a Vopsop again, which is called Bulge. The Bulge works like so. Um, we take a vector component again, this time from the color. So output a single variable, variable and say point color attribute. So we save some space type component get vector component choose the first one and use the function called displace along normal the displace along normal um, should be have an input in amount from our color and the rest will be done automatically, namely taking over the positions and the normals. Um, two more things. Uh, the one is that we would love to, um, well, see a result here um, when displacing this. And, um, well, I can do it like so, but it shouldn't be necessary, actually. Let's connect the displaced position, and well, we don't need that. And now you can see this stuff is going out like crazy, but we can reduce that effect by scaling it in. Of course, I would like to have a control in a better place than here, so I can left click on that icon and say promote parameter. Now if I go up, I um, have to say, well maybe I break it again, so it just um, works right away. Now, by reconnecting the nodes, it works. And I only want this to push inside very, very slightly. And now you might say, yeah, why did you start this? But it really makes a difference when rendering because your kind of highlights and reflections look different if there is some bulge. Apart from that, I would use a constant node. Um, which is set to vector using the middle mouse button and pull it up to 111 and feed it inside the color. Now this only looks um, that uniform because we still have not smooth shaded and now you can see the dent a little. Without smooth it looks very harsh despite the fact we tried our best to have a smooth curve here. Doesn't really work, so let's smooth it so it is better. And we sh still should, of course, optimize our curves as well. Okay, now let's, let me just check whether we forgot stuff, but I think we are um, about to be able to build the studio around our tube. First of all, let's just um, scale the tube in a little. This node was what I meant to do. Not the radius, that should be kept minimal, but the scaling can be a bit more, I think. Let's see whether this group selection works. Ah, it seems I broke it by um, using the bulge. So 
So let's see, works now. That's a typical case of early um, using on groups. So let's do it right after the X shape. So now I can do my kinds of operations, squeeze stuff around, bulge it a little, but uh, it's not such a good sign that my bulge is affecting these guys. Now the transform can be redone. Maybe like this. Let's have a look at it in conjunction. It's way too much. Maybe like this. All right, let's save it. And now it's time to build the studio. All right, let's just add a null. Call it out just for later use in case we need it. And go up pressing U. Now press Geo and call it studio. Dive inside, delete the file. And now let's use an add node to just add a few points. The first point has um, to be placed in um, minus one, so it's on the left, and point three in Z, so it's in front. That's our first guy. Let's press plus and activate the next point, which is again minus one in X. So it's sitting on the left as well, and it should be in depth, so it should be like in the back, minus 0.4 will do. Next point, activate it, set it to minus 1 as well, so it's on the left, and put it up by 0.4 units push it back even further so we have some kind of laid back shape. Now you would go over to polygons and connect them by group. This will be our um, path for extrusions but first of all we should resample that node. Click on points um, to see how many you have and I've chosen to click maximum segments by four and resample by polygon edge. That way I have this kind of distribution. Now let's use a poly spline to smoothen that. The poly spline um, is creating more points in a smooth manner, but there's some stuff I should set up. Please play around with this if you're not um, experienced with it yet. But that way I get a nice shape. Let's look at it from the side. It stays on the ground and smoothly goes up. Now all I need to do is use a poly extrude. Extrude it to the side, excuse me. And uh, that way, if I extrude it by two units, I have a reasonably big studio, so my camera can move to the side a little. And put a null out there, so this is my studio. Let's go up. The next thing we need is a camera, so just put yourself in front of the tube and click on this little icon no cam and say new camera. Now it's time to redefine that. 
setting translates to zero and maybe put this up in height like uh, I'd say six centimeters and don't go too far away this is the Z value we can still zoom in so one will be okay and use no rotation whatsoever now let's go to view and zoom in and transform it a little more I would like to disable the specular and now I'm not quite sure let's just leave the camera for, for a second going to native viewport camera and um, let's just check because I don't want to, to film the edge in front but yeah we'll see how it turns out later next we need light sources and um, there is um, first of all um, just the standard lights we need and this is um, if you see it from top this light should be coming from this side press spacebar one to go to um, 3d mode again and I would like to define the grid it's an area light so I go to area light options and I really make it like a small um, vertical element so I have a nice reflection move it so it comes from here can be a bit closer and um, let's also set a render network just type rob and press enter go inside type mantra and so far I think we can keep it all the way it is I just want a quick render so let's switch over to render view use the camera one and the mantra node and hit enter we don't need a preview and of course I don't really need that long shadow here so um, we should reevaluate the light position maybe by turning it over and um, of course some more values no self shadow single sided don't need a fall off right now but maybe a att attenuation physical correct and I should really get a good light intensity so let's just reduce it 0.3 and now what's kind of frauding my eye is the specular so let's go to shop context and create some clay material go back to object and um, put it on the material clay it's still very bright so it wasn't the specular so let's reduce the light intensity to 0.1 as light is adding up we can keep it the way it is even if it appears a little dark now now let's copy this light source and paste it and now go to transform and just change the x value disable the original light so you can see it coming from the left hand side and now all we need to do is setting up, excuse me, the rotation y direction. So those lights should be exactly similar. Activate both lights in conjunction. And well, this lighting might may appear flat, but 
if it's a product shot, I don't want it to be super exciting. What we have to get rid of is the wrong shadows, though. You can take both nodes and go to light and reduce the intensity to 0.06 for the time being. Well, let's keep it to 0.1. And um, we can also change the positions and so on of the lights. But now I need another area light coming from the top. Just type light move the light source upwards and slightly in front give it a grid and define the area light as we did before so make it 30 by 30 centimeters A physically correct attenuation, no self shadow, single sided if you like, and move it over. Isolate the light source by disabling the other light sources. Go to render view and reduce it the intensity. So now we have a um, at least let's say better shadow on the ground and we pronounce the shape of the, the finger bit. We also want to have a really really good shadow underneath um, the folding. Now let's have a look at all light sources together. It's really bright. So now let's just see that we make this light from top darker. Call this from top. And I think well let's just turn off all the lights for the time being. And um, that way you can see you have headlight creation on. But well I either have to look for it but as soon as first light source is activated, it's getting overridden. So this is from right, and this is from left. From top. And now we can um, illuminate the studio by um, using a, another light source which is a copy of from top copy pasted go to area light options and make it bigger tilt it up isolate it and let's render it this can be the light intensity, excuse me, of the studio light we just created. Can be brighter, of course. And it doesn't need to include the tube. For that, we need the light linker. And we can just choose the studio light and say you only light the studio. Unfortunately, it is still um, using the shadow of the tube, which I can't get rid of right now. Let's choose over to shadow mask for that and just set it to studio. That way we have a light source which can influence the studio by itself. And my other lights from right, left and top 
can be set so they only light the tube. For that they should be enabled. Let's see again. Top left right and the shadow mask should be on tube, tube and tube. Okay, now after restarting the program it works. And now it's time to apply textures. Just type material and drag it. Whoops, that was a bit quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Once you have created the first material node, copy paste it, put it there, copy paste it. and put it there so you have material one two three i stop the rendering for the time being and go over to the shop context and i want more materials namely mantra surface copy paste it two times and call it cap body and floor let's go back to our tube and load the materials in for the cap I want cap for the fold I want body and for the body I want body as well Now, if you render this again, you will see one big difference. This is the harsh specular. By this, you can tell that our materials are applied or have been applied. And we go to the shop context again and redefine stuff, namely the body material. If you click on it once, you can disable the enable diffuse button and that way you get a black body and this makes you see the specular really good. You can also see the kind of um, vague reflections on the surface which increases the realism. So now let's go to reflect and disable the base reflection. Instead we go to the code reflection first, activate it, reduce it significantly, and make it really wide, maybe like 30 or so. Well, 30 may be a bit big because this is making it turn to milky. I still want to keep the base color, so maybe 18 or so depending on the position of your light sources, will look good. The intensity, however, should be reduced. I set it to 0 0.006 or so, so it can hardly be seen. Then I activate the base again, make it weaker as well. Distribute it more, maybe 12 will do, and make it really, 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 really weak. Let's activate diffuse again, and just for testing purposes, I give it some color. Now let's see if this color is kind of making its way on our surface. If it's too milky, you should reduce the reflection amount, especially in code, but also um, the base can have influence if you 
have a specular angle that is too wide. I don't, I think, so let's just, well, yeah, I even increase it the width a bit, but this is um, something you can experiment on by yourself. The cap, we can go through the same process, deactivate the diffuse color, go to reflection, disable the base, start with the code reflection, reduce it, make it wider. Once you think it's okay, go back to base, give it a harsh reflection, increase the strength, uh, decrease the strength. Once you think it's okay, you just go to the diffuse, enable it, and if you wanted to, you could also put in some subsurface scattering, but I think that's overkill in that scenario. And we can go back to object mode. By the way, if there is things you don't like about um, the looks, uh, especially of the cap, you can dive in again and just redefine stuff here. Because the shading really shows whether everything looks nice or not. So what you could do is there are several places then to consider. You could first of all redefine the looks of the shape by um, well, let's move the subdivision to here just for the time being. And um, you can change the looks again up here. You could but also um, increase this number. Maybe you want this to be as big as this. And you can also go through other settings, such as um, the, this value here, um, which is pushing shape in or out. This all makes um, a, a big impact on the reflection behavior of the edges. Let's just move, shake the subdivide out and put it in there again. And now we can hit render again and just focus on this area down here. Maybe you want the cut to be a little higher. So let's go back and just um, choose both nodes and just set it to zero, zero, 2 and this may look a little more friendly compared to this let's just check it If you want to make the gap uh, a little smaller, just you can use that, do that when rendering, it's no problem. So you would just add another 5 there. Didn't make much of a difference, so what else can I do? The extrusion inwards can be minimized, so maybe that's sharper then. Yeah, I think this is, has been a good idea and, well, this just demonstrates how flexible with, you are within a kind of data flow modeling approach. You can really change stuff to, to the very end without getting into modeling too much.
Okay, what are we missing? Um, well, we didn't define the floor material yet. If you wanted to, you can turn it down. See. Let's use an extreme value just for checking if it's applied or not. This is not the case, so let's go to Studio and put in a material which says floor. Now we know it's working, so let's just put it to a gray. You may also want to have some slight reflections in front, so just say reflect. Let me have a look. Now we see the reflection. Coming in. The darker your material, the better you see the reflections. So just for testing, turn it down. And well, you can basically decide for yourself how bright you want it. Now, one last thing. I would like to show you how to texture the tube. For that, we should stop rendering and just look at the tube. Let's disable the lights and texture the tube using UV texture, setting it to cylindrical. And for seeing our texture projection, we set it to UV quick shade. Correct the scale by minus one, the direction seems to be correct. And now let's draw our own texture right within. Houdini, we have used a COP2 net for that, and I type COP again to get a Bob COP2 generator. I dive in there and connect X to R and Y to G. Go to composite view to see what we're doing. Let's go up and define the size of our texture by 1024 by 512. So this is the label we're gonna wrap around our body. With the HSV we can change the colors a bit, suck out the saturation and make the whole thing darker using value scale. Now I would like to use a few ramp nodes. I set them to a um, concentric ramp, giving them a hold. And I have to click here to see what I'm doing. Using number of cycles, like I don't know, seven or so, and by moving the points away from the center, I get this nice shape. Make this a little fatter and put it to grey. Let's copy paste the ramps and the other ramp should be set or can be set to ease in. And I can make this a bit more stricter and also change maybe the number of cycles. Now let's use a composited a composite node and combine those ramps using Subtract. We can 
use another composite node to combine those colors together, this time using screen. And of course we we can suck out some some color and the RAMs should have the proper size of 2024 by 512. Same here. We can basically copy this parameter over. And um, this may be our graphic, so we can just write it out. And um, we don't need the UV quick shade anymore, so our cylinder is still textured, but we don't see the texture yet. Because what we want is to load the texture in the material, so let's switch over to the material and among diffuse you just say use color map I'm sorry not the hard disk but we use an operator obj slash tube slash um, it was texture I thought let's have a look I call this texture, the cop node, and type it in here, texture. And if I type out as well, I get my um, newly created texture projected right here. So this is just an example. Let's see how it renders. By the way, if you disable use base color and use point color in the diffuse channel of your body material, then you get this image without any color uh, shifts. Or maybe we would like to use more subdivisions. Yeah. All right, I just took out the reflection from the background and there's uh, so much more you can improve, for example, the lighting and so on. Uh, I did another version before which had um, better lighting, I'd say, with a more even background and, and some better defined shadows, but I showed you all the base on how you can create a pack shot like that.